always add a fill. Okay, so next we have our craisins, which is a half cup. Meaning it's being recorded. That's what we're saying. So you're putting your craisins in. All right. Uh, <clears throat> next, we have our cheese. And it must be shredded. And again, that calls for two cups, but you're using one cup in the uh, big bowl. And then when you make your topping, you're going to use the uh, second cup in the topping. All right, lastly, we're adding our mayo. Now, once you add your mayo, it's three-fourths cups. But of course, once you begin to mix up your ingredients, you might find where you need to add just a little more mayo. So let's see what happens with what we've added. Because all of this is going to absorb Let's see. Mix it very well. Because what's going to happen at the end, once you let it sit overnight, it will get juicy from the mayo and the liquid from the broccoli. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm sure that's low fat mayo, right? Girl? Okay, let me say this to you. <laughs> um, I have little notes um, to myself. When you do the mayo, there is such thing as a olive oil mayo that you can use, and that's less calories. I'm using Hellman's regular, but the olive oil mayo is like a greenish tint. You'll be able to distinguish between the two when you're at the supermarket. Okay. Looking good. Yeah, you see how you have to immerse it in, in the liquid so that all of that flavor gets through to that broccoli. All right. Yeah, open those up for me. Huh. I don't know why I didn't even give it. All right. Oh, do a little tad, tad bit more. Tad bit Just a tad bit more. Woo, you know this works your arms. I don't use Rose. Yes, love. Um, how, do, how would it take with salad dressing? I've never done it with salad dressing. I've only done it with mayo. I like that. Um, but you know what? Try Just yeah. try a little bit. Yeah. And see how that works for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I tell you, I make this and I just sit on the patio and eat it. <laughs> because <laughs> it's so good. Broccoli is very good for you. Everything very in here is healthy. good for you. Okay. Now, if you can see mine, it's, it's, it's liquidy. You can see the white of the mayo. Nicely cooked. Okay, so it's all immersed in the mayo. So once you get that done, what you're going to do is put that bowl to the side because you have to make a topping. So now the topping again, we did. Uh, Soror's. One item I left out of that mixture was the bacon bits.
because I had that on there and you still, you have to mix that within, with the topping and this, yes, that's it. So now we're going to do the topping. All righty. That's last. Okay. Lathir is going to put the uh, onions in. All right, and those are the, uh, that's a half cup of onions. She's gonna put the sugar in there. That's about a half cup of sugar. Again, you can use another type of sugar if you wanna use, um, substituted with um, some of the sweeteners that different ones use. You can certainly do that, okay? All right, now Lathir is gonna put in the cheese, okay? We're gonna mix all of this up because this is what we call our topping, okay? Right, you can just drop a little of that in here. Let me just put a little, just the- Those are bacon bits. These are the bacon bits. I just put a little in the mix and then the last layer is going to be the bacon bits, of course. That gives it that flavor. Now, with the bacon bits, you can buy turkey bacon, cook it and crumble it up yourself so that it would you know, be less fat than the regular uh, pork bacon. Okay, so now we're going to take the mix that you started with and we're going to place it in, we have two things. We're going to place it in a bowl that is going to go into the refrigerator. We have small containers here. We, because uh, I will never be able to eat all of this and I wear braces now, so I don't know how I'm going to uh, eat broccoli, okay? Even though I love this, I tell you. We're just gonna put it in here. So we're dividing the uh, containers up. Now this is one pound of broccoli. If you go to Sam's, you'll find that Sam sells broccoli florets and I usually get the florets because it's easier because the bottoms, I throw them away. I don't, I don't like those stalks. So uh, Sam's will have the block, broccoli florets in a bag, two pounds. And all you have to do is make some now, save some for later. If you make the whole uh, two pound bag, you can share it. And it does have a refrigerator uh, time. You can keep it in the refrigerator at least two weeks. Just the bag of if, florets. When you use the whole bag. So um, or if you invite me over after I get these braces off, I'll be able to help you out <laughs> with eating some of that broccoli salad. Putting it all in here. And you're going to find, as I said, once this sits overnight, you will be able to enjoy that delicious flavor. And this one, yeah, this worked out well, Etheria. Etheria cut up a pound of the broccoli florets, and it's just perfect. Okay. Now you see that they're in the container, and we are now going to spread the cheese, the sugar and onions. We're gonna just spread that on the top. Because we're doing two, but you know, if this were one, we, all, all of this would go on the top of one. But this worked out so well because I was like, hmm, but there, you're going to have to take most of this <laughs> on with you. So 
She has good teeth. She don't have braces on. So, work. And again, if you like a little more, it's up to you. You know, it's your salad, but I gave you the recipe. You do your salad, you do you with your salad. Because I know I would like a little bit more cheese mm -hmm. on mine. And now I am going to just sprinkle the bacon bits on the top. Let's see, that's what I'm going to get some more out. <laughs> because that, that's what happens. It, it just, look there, look right in the refrigerator. You'll see oh, the bag with the bag. Oh, oh. oh, well, you know what? That's fine. Oh, stop. Okay. All right. So here you have it. Turn it, turn it. Can you, can they see? There you are. Bacon is your last layer. So then you're gonna take this salad and you're gonna place it in the refrigerator, okay? And sit it overnight. And tomorrow when you eat your Sunday dinner, you can have some of this as you're grilling those steaks with Juneteenth. <laughs> <laughs> and you can eat this. All right, any questions? Can you hold it up again, please? Perfect. Okay, thank you. You are more than welcome. Enjoy. Okay, thank you so much, Soros, for our oh, first thank segment. Thank you for asking us. We're always cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do now, Sora April, we have our salmon patties from Sora Morella Homes. It is a video and we will try our best to uh, keep you informed with it. So if you could follow along with the video, it would be great. So April, if you could play that video. Good morning, Sororas. Welcome to our very first national federal holiday, Juneteenth. Although we've been celebrating it for a hundred years, we've now gotten a larger society to recognize uh, the fact that uh, on this day um, that the final slaves in Texas were notified that slavery was over. And thank you so much to the Health and Wellness and the Delta Beers Committee for inviting me to share my family's recipe of salmon cakes. And I do apologize. I do know the recipe did say cap, uh, crab cake. And I know several of the have said, oh, I thought it was going to be crab. I do apologize. But I will do a crab cake recipe in the future. So if you're interested, let me know because I do have a crab cake recipe, just so happens. So today, let's get started making our healthy salmon cakes in honor of our Juneteenth celebration. So just to walk you through a little bit about what you're going to need for this, okay? You're going to need a bowl. Uh, you're going to need a can of pink salmon. Um, you're going to need some flour. You're going to need some cornmeal. Uh, I like to season it with sea salt and ground fresh black pepper. Uh, also, you're going to need one egg, uh, onion, pepper. Um, I have a little cheat trick that I'm going to show you how to do that later. You're going to need a tablespoon scooper. And also, you're going to need a quarter cup um, measuring cup. And I also have a half cup here just to start it off. So let's get started. First, after you open your can of pink salmon, and I like to use a manual um, can opener. I don't know why, I'm just kind of old school like that. So after you open it, you have to go drain it. So we'll be right back. So once you get all the water out of the can, and I usually just use the lid to do it, get a fork. And just open up the can. I don't want you to hurt your fingers. And then pour that right into the bowl. And I like to use a fork because some, you know, you know that there will be bones in the can. Let me get. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get it here. Uh, there we go. I like to use a fork to break up this canned salmon 
because you know there will be bones in a can but they're very soft very palatable you don't have to worry about that so i just like to use a fork to break them up so you don't taste them when you bite into one of these yummy 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 salmon cakes yummy 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 so this rubber sheet please started because every sunday morning my father would wake up and make salmon cakes for us before we would go to sunday school or church so this is a, a tradition a recipe that i learned from my father and now my kids they enjoy having salmon cakes every sunday or when they want. So what I like to do, I like to um, make a small well with the salmon. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. So you see, there's a nice little small well on the side. And I crack my egg right in the middle of the well. Okay. And then the trick here is your ratio. So what I like to do, I like to do, and that's why it's handy to have your tablespoon scooper. I like to do two parts flour to one part cornmeal now that's my father's recipe but being up north we have this wonderful thing called house of audrey seafood breader it is awesome it comes in two flavors you can get regular or hot seafood and this is what i used to cheat instead of doing that two to one ratio but because it wasn't on the menu list for you all to purchase so that's why you want to do two two tablespoons of flour to one tablespoon of cornmeal to give you that nice flavor. So what I do, instead of doing that, this is what I use. Um, no, I'm not getting paid to advertise anyone this year. So just so you know that. And I know that we talked about chopping out onion and bell pepper and our soy, but look what I found at the neighborhood Dollar Tree. So if you know anything about Southern cooking, and we have a trio. That trio is onions, peppers, and celery. That is the basic thing that we put in all of our soups, all of our seasonings, all of our meats, all of our dishes. Well, at our handy dandy Dollar Tree, it already comes packaged awesome. So your onions, your celery, your peppers always come together with parsley. So what I take, I take a half a cup. It's already made because I don't have to worry about tearing up and getting uh, my eyes watered. See, the onions, peppers, and celery already chopped up and put that right in. And this is where you can get very creative with your seasoning. Usually, um, if I have Old Bay, I would do Old Bay seasoning in here. Um, if you want, you can do a dill lemon seasoning here. Um, Malia, of course, you know, she's my ranch girl. She loves to put a little ranch seasoning in here um, for hers. But I just do the same basic salt and pepper because I like the taste of the salmon. So this is where you will season your salt and pepper. Here. So that way I, I like the well because when you go to mix it up, you'll see how easy everything does combine. And I take my one tablespoon here and breadcrumbs. That gives it a nice little crunch texture when you're going to do it. Now, I forgot one thing that you're going to need. An air fryer. We're talking about healthy cooking. Woohoo! I have my handy dandy air fryer right here. So you, you see, as we mix it up, you see when you make that well, how everything just comes in and it just mixes so well. Yes, yes, I love when you do the well. So what happens is mix it all in and make sure you get all the ingredients in. So it's a nice uh, together stickiness. That's why that bread, the bread crumbs, and the egg makes it really hold together when you get ready to fry it. Now, this is a trick that I learned um, by watching numerous uh, cooking shows, but also um, using different forms of protein. Um, at one point, I did try to be a vegan, but um, yeah, we'll see how that worked out. So what we do, I take that same quarter cup scooper that I have here, and that way, because you can get about six uh, salmon cakes out of one can. So I just take that one scoop in here. And I'll just do it like this. So you have a nice form patty. You don't want your patties too big because when you pan fry them, it's going to take a long time for that center to get ready. So that way you want to make sure all your salmon cakes are evenly distributed. So this nice little quarter cup here, make sure that every salmon cake has at least one quarter cup of mixture in it. So after I make up the salmon cakes, I like to put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes. And that's the trick that I learned. Ooh. Excuse me. That's the ground pepper. Sorry about that. Pepper and onions make you sneeze. So the trick that I learned is that when you put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes, it sets the patty. Ah, wonderful. So that way, particularly if you pan frying, 
your salmon cake won't fall apart because it has that nice little chill from being in the freezer for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to make these up right here. And I'm going to put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes and get them nice and solid. So if you are deciding to pan fry, and this is my suggestion, if you are pan frying, please, please use a cast iron skillet. I think it, it evenly distributes the heat better. Um, and also use a vegetable-based cooking oil um, to fry your salmon cakes in. Uh, a vegetable-based, that could be canola oil or even olive oil. Olive oil. Um, uh, so that way you have your here. And if you have a little extra over, I couldn't always have a little extra over. So I'd be like a little, a little teeny tiny one, a little mini salmon cake here, because I don't believe in wasting anything. But like a little mini, mini one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over and put these in the freezer, and we're going to come back and fry them up. <laughs> So I'll be right back. Of course, no. I know that was pretty fast, right? So I went ahead and made some beforehand. Now the trick, and some people say, well, you know, I'm not really good at the air fryer. The trick is making sure you spray whatever you have in the air fryer down before you put it in. So it's just a regular generic air fryer. And see, they're nice and solid. So I'm going to put them in here. Oh, they want to come off the plate. Here. Now, we want to talk about some possible size that you can have. Usually, of course, like I said, I grew up eating these Sunday morning before going to Sunday school and church. Um, and I just use a regular, a regular oil fryer here. My light just went out, no worries. Sorry about that. Um, and I spray it here. And what you want to do, put it on, put it on 375. Temperature is 375. Okay, my one is 375 for 380. And you want to do it for five minutes. And we only do it for five minutes because at the end of five minutes, you're going to turn it over and you're going to let the up opposite side fry that nice golden brown. So in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a healthy version of salmon cakes. Now, what sides could you eat with your salmon cake? So I've done salmon cakes for dinner uh, with a side of creamy mashed potatoes and butter um, with the vegetable. I'm also in breakfast. I do it with my grits and my eggs. But the best way I like to eat my salmon cakes, like I said, I'm not being paid to advertise anything here, is this horseradish marmalade sauce. It is awesome! So, when these get ready, um, we definitely want you to, if you have tartar sauce, some people like ketchup, some people like mustard, but I found this wonderful little sauce here, they call it a dipping sauce, and see, look, it's made for crab cake tacos and poor boys. So you talk about something that's made just for your salmon cakes, here we are right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off for a minute, because we have five minutes on one side, I'm going to flip it over, do five minutes on the other side. Uh, typically, I like to do 375, but this air fryer only does uh, intervals of 10, so it's on 380. So the first five minutes, uh, you know, first, first I'll coat it with your olive oil spray. Five minutes, after five minutes, turn it over. Um, do the second five minutes, and then when I come back, I'll show you the finished version. Thank you. Okay, so as while we're waiting, has anyone started frying or deep frying their salmon patties yet? If you can, you can show us that. I'm just putting mine on, so mine aren't ready yet. So I'm not sure, uh, Morella sent the video. Um, I'm not sure if she sent a second one. Um, but by the time we're finished, mine will be done. So I'll give you kind of an idea of what they would look like. I don't know. Is anyone else cooking the salmon patties? Uh -uh. What's this? Um, the horseradish sauce that she was talking about? I didn't see that. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. We'll, we'll ask her. We'll get all that information. Yeah. yeah I want to know where she got it from. Yeah. I'm recording it. So um, I'll be able to share that with you. 
and that seafood that other in addition to yeah. the breadcrumbs. Yeah. I'd like to know that. That looks the good. House of Aubrey. Yeah, House of Aubrey. They had that at Walmart. Oh. oh. Yeah, my husband uses that. So it's House of Aubrey. Audrey, Audrey. Audrey. Sometimes I think ShopRite might have, but I know Walmart has. No, ShopRite does not have. Start shopper doesn't have well Walmart has it. Walmart. I first bought it in Walmart down south. Yeah, Walmart. Oh, okay. Um, Linda. Yes. Are you do you have yours in an air fryer or are you using a pan? I'm using a pan, I'll show you. Okay. Well, because I didn't feel like I didn't feel like um I can't get it in there. I didn't feel like uh Okay, I got you. Um Cleaning the air fryer. I just, it's, it mine's a big one. So I didn't want to, I didn't feel like going to. They see what headaches they give you. So again, is anybody else doing the salmon patties or no? No, I left my, I'm going to do it when I get home. I left it home. Okay. Okay. So I'll show you mine when we're done. So at this point, are there any questions so far? We have a wonderful broccoli salad that Rose and Letheria made. We have salmon patties. Any questions on anything else before we get on to our lovely dessert? No? Okay, so Rita, you are up. All right, let me try to position. Can you, wait a minute. Can you see the bowl? Is that, yeah. wait a minute. Is that good? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. This dessert is so easy. So first you just take your, I'm using light cool whip. You just pour it in a bowl. Take your can. I use dough crushed pineapple because some pineapples don't taste good in a pan. No need to drain. Just put the whole can in here. Break a little bit out. Then I have my Jello sugar-free pistachio pudding mix. I opened it already, so I'll be ready. Just pour it in and stir. And you, everything should turn green. You see the green coming in. Uh, can you see? Mm -hmm. Now, but this pistachio I like because it has little nuts in it. I forgot to tell you, I did have little nuts in it, but they're so mm -hmm. small. But it adds a special taste to it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That is that's easy, fine. Rita. <laughs> yeah, I told you it's easy. And. Put it in a, your favorite dish, whatever you want. You could freeze it, have it frozen. Sometimes I put it in little containers. Oh, like a parfait kind of thing? Right, and I have a little, a little small parfait thing. Well, a little cup with a lid. Mm -hmm. I make sure because I cool it with frozen, making sure that it's all melted. You could use a whip also to make sure, which I'm going to use. Use a whip to make sure that all the whip is melted. Then put it into a cup or a bowl. You can sprinkle it with a little graham cracker crumbs. Put a little strawberry on top. Couple of blueberries. And that's it. That looks good. It's a light dessert that's fun to eat. To freeze it into little servings and that's it it's not that fattening with weight watches i'm not sure the point so i was just about to ask you probably i, I use the light cream with you use a light fat free 
-hmm. the sugar free, the jello is um, sugar free. It only has 25 calories. But I asked, I can't, I've got to figure out how to do the recipe builder on my phone. Mm -hmm. But I will find out and let you know. But that's it. That's my little quick dessert that's fun to eat. Yay. Yay. Okay. Now that was jello, not pudding, right? Just it's okay. it's the jello pudding mix. It's the pudding mix. But okay, so it's yeah. pudding mix. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. jello. Yeah. They had this at shop, right? A dollar. That looks delicious. I can't. It does. Mm -hmm. And then you can use light or fat free, whatever kind of Cool Whip, or you can use a store brand. Uh -huh. And I just always use Dole's crushed pineapple. Yeah, yeah. they're the best. Yeah, they taste the best. Yep, and that's it. Okay, and so Rita, was that in its own juice? Was that I in mean, its own juice, Rita? You put the juice in it also, everything. Mm. But I mean, was it in its own juice or it wasn't sweetened? It wasn't syrup? Yeah, I buy the crushed pineapple in a pineapple's juice. Okay. They do have it in syrup, but mm -hmm. I buy it in the juice. Mm -hmm. Is that for less calories? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So what I did is I didn't use the um, the pistachio for what I didn't see it, and then I oh, wasn't too I wasn't too keen on pistachio, so I just used vanilla. Okay. Oh. So did the same thing. So this that is looks my good, Linda. Thank you. All right, Linda. Yeah. A variation. Okay. Of yeah. good. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Terrific. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show you my salmon patties. I just turned them over. Okay. Um, uh, can you see them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have oh, yeah. I'm oh. losing myself here. There they are. I can't. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Nice. Okay. Oh, nice. I can't see, nice. Wait a minute. I can't see it. You can't? No. Are oh, they in the pot still? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. They're still okay. cooking. <laughs> oh, okay. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we unmuted? Yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm exactly. Hungry. <laughs> so what I wanted to say was I, I thank everybody for participating um, and coming on. Um, we could have done more. I gave us enough time that if we needed to do more, we could have. Um, but if there are recipes that you all want to share, send them to me and I'll put something together and we can, you know, just keep sharing recipes. I think um, our healthy eating habits are good. I okay. think we have, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff that we can share with each other to help each other out. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm getting ready to take this big weight loss journey because I can't take it anymore, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I'm the kind of person that needs, food. I need to know how to eat something and I'm real picky. So it's hard for me to find stuff to eat. Um, so I'm obviously eating the wrong thing, but you know, little tips of using certain oils and, and low yeah. fat this and that. Cause a lot of times you think that the low fat stuff doesn't taste good, but it does. Yeah. So we, we can learn to do that. So so again, I thank everyone. I don't want to um, belabor it unless other people have other things they want to share. Feel free. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, lady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So you guys, right. it was very nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Will um, please have a good Juneteenth. Go out yeah. there to one of the events. Please know that Trenton is on lockdown. You think you're going to one street, you can't get through because they have stuff blocked off for the events. So um, it took me an yeah. extra 30 minutes just to get to shop right this morning because I should have just yeah. went through Ewing oh. instead of going through Trenton. But um, have a good day. Happy okay. Juneteenth. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. 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 B
Exit 7A, Doug Smart today. Oh, okay. And you can hear his story when he uh, is done there. Yeah. He rides bikes all the time everywhere. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a Juneteenth bike race. So yes. Right? Remember, it came to sorority meeting for um, Tanya McCoy. Right. And we talked about what she was doing. Mm -hmm. So I think Doug Smart got under her and doing X7A. That, yeah. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So good. A lot of good things going on in the city today. Yeah. So we got a go gospel fest and arts and crafts at the park. Yeah. Right. And then there's also the um the black cowboys. Oh yeah. Are gonna be out there. I'm gonna try to hit that. We're not gonna be. Yeah, I'm not exactly, wait a minute, let me find the, the uh, text that I got. I'm not sure exactly where they are, but, oh, let me stop recording. Mm -hmm.